The Boring Company is owned almost entirely by Elon Musk. I mean, he owns 90% of the company. The Boring Company is kind of at the level of a hobby for him right now, I think. Although, as hobbies go, it could be worth billions of dollars. I don't think there have been any canceled projects, but I don't think there have really been any projects. You know? so it's like, we think we're going to do something in Chicago. We th we're interested in doing something in Las Vegas. We've talked about doing something in New York. These are kind of still at the proposal and discussion stage. And this is actually not that unusual as far as big infrastructure projects go. You know, an infrastructure project requires a lot of steps. I mean, a lot of people need to weigh in on what's going to happen if you're going to build a new freeway or a bridge. Much of what the Boring Company is uh, doing at this point is kind of setting itself up as, a, as I, I think, you know, just as a player in the space. They're not necessarily doing anything particularly advanced as far as the technology here. Rapidly being able to dig tunnels that vehicles or people can move through at high speeds is an antidote to the problem of gridlock and congestion in urban areas. The Boring Company itself is working on a tunneling machine that can operate at much higher speed, and I think the idea is it might be able to operate in kind of a drone-like way or a computerized way. Now, as far as the projects are concerned, they've, they've created a sample, like a test tunnel that's a little over a mile long near SpaceX headquarters. And then there uh, is the Chicago project, a high-speed Elon Muskified people mover to connect, in the case of Chicago, downtown with O'Hare Airport. And the idea in Vegas is to kind of to move people around at higher speed. Not so much a bunch of boring company tunnels that are going to be running underneath freeways and are going to provide you with maybe what the initial promise was. When they first rolled it out, they said, okay, what we're going to have is essentially uh, cars going down into these tunnels and getting on these high-speed sleds. But the idea now is that we could have a, what people might recognize more as mass transit, where people would go down into the tunnel and get on some sort of, you know, sled that accommodates, you know, 20 people or 50 people or something like that, and that would move through the tunnel, as opposed to it being, you know, one person in their car going down there and be able to bypass all the traffic. You know, the only thing that really is preventing these projects from moving forward is financing, public will, you know, some kind of civic buy-in, then government support. I mean, the, the, you need a package to make this stuff happen. And then you also have to look at, you know, what are the environmental effects. It sounds to me like the Vegas tunnel is the closest one to actually happening. You know, Vegas is kind of interested in doing this. It sounds to me like the Chicago tunnel was uh, highly dependent on, on Mayor Rahm Emanuel being able to drive it through city council without him, him driving the project forward, that there could be some issues with it. That's not to say it, it won't happen. It's just that sometimes, I don't know, it's, it's something about the way things work in, in America that you need to have someone dropping in, parachuting in with some crazy high-tech idea. It's like, oh, this is a game changer. It's going to change everything. Instead of it taking, whatever, you know, half an hour to 45 minutes to go from Manhattan out to JFK, you could do it in 15 minutes, and you're going to be going 275 miles an hour, and you're not even going to know it. So there is that aspect of it. And then there's the, the marketing value of it for Elon Musk's other companies. If Elon is out doing a project, a high-tech project that's going to revolutionize tunneling, it continues the narrative of him being a revolutionary Silicon Valley problem solver. The financing and political aspect of it is where all the tricky stuff comes into play. The places where that kind of financing would be available are typically large urban areas where the po political aspects of such a project are going to be quite complicated. People might be concerned that boring tunnels underneath where they live is going to geologically destabilize their area. Of the companies that he's created, the one that's you know, going to have the most challenges actually getting anything well, fulfilling some of its more ambitious objectives is probably going to be the Boring Company, ironically. If the Boring Company does grow and they sign up some real contracts and start doing some real projects, then there might be some, you know, significant follow-on investment. And I've seen people talking about valuations of anywhere from $10 billion to $20 billion, you know, in that, in that ballpark. They have discovered that by selling merch, <laughs> they, can, uh, they can raise quite a bit of money. So the first thing they did, well, they did hats, Boring Company hats, and I think they raised like $5 million, million dollars, a ridiculous amount of money on just hats. Then they did these flamethrowers. At the moment, I think what would take it out of you know, Elon Musk's big hobby is financing, right? So when they get to the point that they are actually talking about doing some projects, there'll be large sums of money attached to that. That money will represent revenue to the boring company. So once we start seeing that dynamic take over, where the business becomes, you know, capitalized outside of the founders, then you have a real company. I'd say it's still a pretty glorious hobby at this point for Elon Musk, but I think that because they're making progress uh, and are sort of working out the kinks in the technology and all that kind of stuff, that it's becoming more of a real thing. And if they do a, a project in Vegas in particular, then I think everybody will go, oh, well, this is for real. This, is, this isn't just a, you know, an amusing name for a company. It's an actual business doing actual things in the actual world.